In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can better work with views in your database using Mindscape's Lightspeed. Okay, so I've got Visual Studio 2008 open here. I'm going to create a new console application using .NET 3.5. Let's call this Demo 3. Click OK. Now I'm going to go through the usual steps here with the screencast. We're going to create a model. So we go to Data, Lightspeed Model. And uh, just to be original, I'll call it model.lsmodel. Here we get the design surface. Now Lightspeed has always supported working with views, but within Lightspeed 2.2, we decided to add some slightly better designer support. So here, if I jump into the Server Explorer, you can see here that in our demo store, I've created two views. One is cheap items and one is SKU code. So cheap items is going to return any rows in our database where the product that we're selling is less than $10 and SKU code is going to return a projection over the SKU table where it's only going to return the code and the ID of the of that row. It's important when doing projections in Lightspeed to always return an ID because one of the conventions that Lightspeed has for its entities is that there will be an ID field for every entity that it manages. First though, we need to no, we need to drag on our tables drag them on there, arrange them, make them nice and pretty. And we're going to be working with this SKU entity primarily. So here, if we drag cheap items onto this entity, it will automatically create this view subsection for us. Now if we dragged on a view that didn't match one of these uh, fields, for example, the Lightspeed Designer will automatically warn us about that. So let's grab the other one. Now SKU code is a projection, so it's not going to match any of the existing entities, so if I just drag that, drop it onto the surface background, it creates a new entity type for us, SKU code, which is effectively just going to be ID and code. We save, and that's pretty much everything we have to do with the designer here. It's all been uh, code generated out for us, so we'll close that. And let's add our application configuration. Okay, I'm just going to copy and paste the uh, configuration in here. If you'd like more help with how to set up the configuration, check out the Getting Started screencast on the Mindscape site. Alright, there we go. Config section, our connection string, and our standard context talking to a SQL Server 2005 database. Alright, so time for some actual coding. Okay, so first thing we need to do is set up our Lightspeed context. Just paste that in there, add the reference. So creating a strongly typed Lightspeed context using the model unit of work that we've just created using the designer and we're passing in the default context configuration. Okay, so let's go and create a unit of work so that we can actually query our database. So we'll use the short uh, lifespan unit of work by using a using statement. We'll just go unit of work equals context.create unit of work. And I'll also just quickly add a console.read line down here so that when we run these demos up, it stays on the screen for a moment. Okay, so the first nice thing that we can do here is find that our unit of work already has our views listed here as iQueryable uh, objects that we can work with. So here we have iQueryable type SKU because that matches the SKU. And down the bottom, we have SKU codes. And that, of course, returns this new entity type, SKU code, that didn't actually match any of the tables in our database. So let's just write a simple query well, here to just loop through everything. So for each, and let's go for a SKU in the unit of work dot cheap items. And let's just print that out on the screen. Right line skew dot display name. Okay, excellent. And if we run that up, huzzah, we get some output. Spare buttons. Buttons are probably some of the cheaper items in our store selling jeans. So that's all good. And of course, we could have used skew code here. And of course, that wouldn't have matched our skew uh, entity type before. And we just have code on there as well as the usual things that you get uh, because this is an entity object. So we can spit out the code. We can run that. Excellent. So 
what if we actually wanted to write a query and then we wanted to pass it in using the old style light speed querying model. Say we have something particularly complex rather than just something simple here like looping through everything in the database. How could we go about that? Well let's write a query. Here we go. So using a standard light speed query object where we're going to say with the entity attribute product ID equals one we now have this view name property and this effectively is going to instruct Lightspeed when executing this query to only run it over this view. So now if we go and create some results here, so I list of skew results equals unit of work dot find pass in skew we just pass in our query object there. If we have that so it runs over that and oopsie over the results and we'll just print out our description. So in this case we expect to simply see our buttons again. If we run that, excellent, spare buttons again. So you can see here that Lightspeed makes it very easy to work with views when you have them. The designer makes it really easy for you to uh, work with views as well. What about saving things? Well obviously in the case where we're working with SKUs, if we tell our uh, unit of work to save the changes that we've made to that SKU, it will simply update the SKU table. It doesn't make any changes to the view itself directly. If we're working with a type, for example our SKU code type, which was sim a simple projection over the SKU table, obviously we can't update the SKU table. What happens here is if you call save changes on that, Lightspeed will attempt to try and save that into the view. This of course requires that your view be updatable or else it will fail. That's pretty much a, a quick round trip of working with views with Lightspeed. I hope if you're working with views this has helped you out. If you have any feedback please uh, let us know. And other than that, thank you very much for, for watching.